Excel accounting practice problem. Pay bills. Get ready, because we're about to excel. So we are in our Excel worksheet. In prior presentations, we created this Excel worksheet from a blank sheet. Now continuing to enter transactions into it. If you have access to it, two tabs on down below, the example tab and the practice tab. Practice tab starting out where we left off last time. The example tab in essence being an answer key. Let's take a look at it now. We're going to say that uh, we're going to be making a payment on account. So in other words, we've got the accounts payable. This was our beginning balance that we set up. And now we're going to be paying off the beginning balance, which will be decreasing this amount and decreasing the checking account. We also have to be thinking about the subsidiary ledger, breaking out the accounts payable by vendor. So let's go back to the practice tab and do this one. We'll do some cleanup work first to, to get started. I'm going to hide the cells from the skinny column all the way to A because I got everything unhidden here and hide all that stuff. So we're going to hide that and then... We want to copy the ending balance from the last time in the trustee trial balance. And I'm going to put that on my beginning balances. Right click and paste it. One, two, three. And delete the stuff in the middle. So now we got this nice worksheet so we can work on what we need to work on right here. And then also see the detail in the GL as well. Let's go on over to the right side and take a look at our accounts payable sub ledger over here. Here's the, the, the stuff that basically uh, people owe, we owe other people in the sub ledger. And wait a second, I'm not quite there yet. That's the visa, that's the general ledger. I'm still in the GL. It says right up top. It says right up top. So we're way over here in CR, column CR. So we got Epiphone. That's the only person in our sub ledger at this point in time. I'm also going to make this number instead of making it uh, red. Let's see if we can make that green and we might do some formatting some other formatting but for right now let's make that green because it's not not a wrong number to so we have to un i'm going to right click on it we're going to format that cell i'm going to go to currency and i'm going to make the bracketed without the red and remove the dollar sign okay and then you could make it green up top showing that that's kind of our check figure okay so there's going to be that now we got the fifteen thousand here that Epiphone that we own Epiphone that was a beginning balance we didn't enter the bill in this period but it was in basically our prior accounting system that we put on the books and put the supporting information into the accounts payable now we're simply going to be paying that off at this point in time so fairly straightforward transaction let's go all the way to the left and do it so we've got then the amount in the payable right there it's a credit balance so we're going to debit it so this happens, we're going to say on 126 again, 126, we're going to be debiting the accounts payable. We're going to be crediting, paying it off with, in essence, cash. If you're using a QuickBooks type of software or something like this, this might be a special check type form, decrease to the checking account, but which ties specifically to the accounts payable so that you can kind of see that connection between, in essence, the bill form that would increase the accounts payable form and then the pay bill form, which is in essence a special check or a check that's going to be going to accounts payable. 15000 is the amount that we're looking for. And we'll put the debit and the credit for the 15000 Here's the accounts payable on top. We're going to go into our trustee trial balance in AG12 equals that 15000 bringing it from 15000 down by 15000 to zero. Checking account on the other side of things up here in AG4 equals picking up that 15,000 on the credit. We got the 109,570 going down by the 15,000 to the 94,570. Let's post it out to the general ledger. Here's our accounts payable. Here it is on the trial balance. So let's scroll on over there. We got the assets in green. We got then the liabilities in orange. We're looking for the AP. That's the first liability down here. So there's the liability in orange. We're going to say this was on, what did we say, 126. So we're in BE, B17. B17, I can't, I'm old now, I can't B17 again. Because you can't go back in time like that. You can't tell me to B7, okay. 15,000. So now we're going to say 15,000 minus 15,000 is back down to zero. That'll put us back out. That'll put us out of balance on the general ledger up top. And we are matching that zero on the, the trial balance to the GL. Now we're going to say the checking account. We got to post the other side to the checking account where all the action is. 
the checking account pretty much always has all the action and the normal accounting processes because all the accounting processes deal with cash in some way, some shape, and or some form. So we're going to pick up that 15,000. We got the 109,570 minus the 15,000, bringing us down to the 94,570. That 94,570 matching out the trial balance, the general ledger back in balance. We also need to post this out to the sub ledge. So bringing this accounts payable by who we owe the money to, similar to the accounts receivable sub ledge, but not by customer, instead by vendor. So all the way to the right, there's Epiphone. That's who we buy our guitars from. So we're going to say on 126, put our cursor in CS5 equals left to the wall, all the way to the wall, boom. And then we're going to pick up that, that uh, payable, which is the debit side of things. So there we have it, bringing the balance down to zero. So now all of our vendors add up to zero here, which matches the checking account given by the green zero here. Now notice I, I kind of wanted to do some conditional formatting possibly on some of these items that have a negative number. So I'm going to start down here. These these negative numbers, we just made them green so that we so that the credit doesn't make us look like it's a negative or red number down there. So we formatted those to look green. We might do a similar formatting with these green zeros and say if it's negative, I'd like it to turn red. Or in this case, if it turns positive, which is a debit balance for this, which would be bad with regards to net income, we can make it turn red. So let's try to do some conditional formatting to do that. I'll select these three items. We're gonna to go to the home tab, conditional formatting. And let's say that if it's if it's greater than, if it's greater than uh, zero, if it's greater than zero, then we want it to be, that's actually when we want it to be red because that's when it's going to be a debit. So we'll have the red fill there. So, and then let's make it a special one though. I'm going to go to the customizing down below. And let's say that we want it to be with regards to the font. We want the font to be red. We want the font to be red. And then I'm going to make the fill black. So it's just going to be black and red. So I'm going to say, okay and okay. So if this was positive, so if this was like a, like a five, it turns red because that would mean we had a loss. And then, um, and then you could just keep it green by default unless it turns, unless it turns flips the other way. That might be the easiest thing to do. So let's just keep it at that. And then I'll format that any other place that that might be useful. So I'll hit the format paintbrush and then go up top. It might be the, the same thing here would be useful. So if this turned to be like five, it would be negative because that's the same kind of check figure. I'm going to format paintbrush that and go all the way to the right where that where that uh, liabilities accounts were the sub ledge and that be, might be another good place to apply that formatting so right there so let's put it right there so then again if it was five it would be backwards there'd be a problem with it otherwise we'll keep it at uh, the green or maybe this one we should just make it white maybe just make it white so there we go on that one so just some formatting stuff as we go and so now if we scroll back on over, this is where we stand at this point with regards to the trustee trial balance. These are our ending balance numbers as of this point in time and the net income. No impact on net income, by the way, from that transaction because the in net income would have been impacted when we entered the bill, which in this case was in the prior period before we started the accounting process because we put that amount in the beginning balance. So it was actually in the prior period that whatever the expense was would have been expensed or possibly the inventory would have been purchased in the case of that particular vendor, Epiphone, which is who we buy our guitars from.